All right, so this afternoon we're going to come out and have a little play at uh, some steel targets and longer range shots. Uh, we've had a lot of like, strong wind in that lately, so uh, it'd be quite interesting because it's still quite breezy. We've probably got about 15 mile an hour wind in that coming down through this valley. So we're going to put some out. Um, got a couple of fox targets here, steel fox targets. I'm going to put these out, one about sort of 400 metres and the other one about 600. And uh, just have a little look at the basics of what it takes to make a shot of those sort of ranges. Okay, so we've got a couple of targets we've put out now. We've got one which is just over 400 yards and then we've got a second one which is, uh, I can't remember what it was now, it's pushing, I think it was 700 and something. Uh, hang on. So that's 625 metres, so that's about 675, 675 yards, something like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a little, uh, little go at the first one first. Um, I'm just going to take a couple of shots at that and then we'll talk about what goes into making the shot. So hopefully with uh, this wind and that we'll be able to put a first round on it but it is coming through here quite, quite a stiff breeze, probably about 15 mile an hour. Um, I'm hoping it's not going to have too much of an effect because it's actually sort of kind of coming straight down the valley but it's also quartering round a little bit so we might have to just make a little allowance for it but uh, we'll have a go and see how we get on. All right, so we've got six MOA on there for the first one, so there we go. Right. Let's bring the pod up a little bit. impact. Happy days. Right, so basically then, um, let's have a quick run through of what we actually did there. So I'm working in MOAs, which is a system of measurement. Um, there's two different systems, you've got mills and you've got MOA. They're basically, in essence, just uh, a different form of measuring the same thing. So I'll explain MOAs because that's what I generally use. So in order for us to hit a target obviously at that distance we need to be shooting above it much like if you used to fire an arrow from a from a bow you'd have to aim higher to get it to travel out further and drop into the target. It's the same principles with a uh, with a bullet from a rifle. So what we've done is I'm using a, uh, a little uh, Kestrel wind meter which has also got a ballistic app built into this um, and I've tuned this to the rifle, I won't go into too much detail about that but basically what we do is I will put in the distance, I'll type the distance in there which for that target was 372 metres and that's given me a correction of 6 MOA which equates to about 2 foot uh, of holdover on the target so 24 inches of drop. So to get that amount I dial my scope round to 6 MOA which is there, and that's just moved that scope reticle up 24 inches above the target. 
and uh, I've literally just gone straight at it. I haven't allowed anything for wind on this, uh, on this which actually turned out to be the right move because um, the wind's basically just coming straight down the valley, so yeah, we haven't, haven't needed to worry about that too much. So what we do is we'll load up a couple more rounds and then we'll go out to the uh, 675 yard target and um, do the same sort of thing and see how that pans out. So we're moving on to the next target now, which is out at 625 metres, which is about 675 yards. Um, I've just put that into the Kestrel and that's given me a elevation correction of 15.31 MOA. So because we're working on scope, which is in 0.25 increments, that's going to be 15.25 is, is rounded off to the nearest, nearest click. So dialing up to 15.25 which is uh, there and I think what I'm going to do because on that first target I noticed the impact was very slightly to the right so we are getting a, just a little bit of wind drift so I'll probably just aim left edge on the next one just aim off slightly so right that's all dialed in let's have a go Right, so that actually panned out quite well. Um, so we've shot two targets there, one about 400 and one at 675. Um, now, basically, I've spent quite a lot of time with this wind meter and ballistics and that, and this rifle, uh, tailored the ammunition, everything, and basically just squared it away and really kind of sort of spent a lot of time working out what the drops are on it. So, uh, which is great, because it means you can just dial in and you bang on each time. But there's also a few other little key sort of points uh, which we can talk about as well, just to help with technique. And um, that is, first thing you want to be doing, whether it's long range shooting or short range or, or whatever, for precision shooting, uh, a good technique when you're shooting off a bipod is to what we call load the bipod. Essentially what that means is you just lean slightly into the rifle, digging the feet of the bipod into the ground a little bit. Um, and that'll just, just take out a little bit of the sort of like the skip from the rifle when you fire in a recoil. And so coming back to the other end of the rifle, another really useful addition is a rear bag. Now, uh, all that actually is, is just uh, like a little bean bag. And by putting that under the rear of the rifle like that, and then with your, with your opposite to your, your shooting hand, if you squeeze that rear bag, then you can adjust the elevation of the rifle up and down. And then when you get the crosshairs on target, you just maintain that pressure on the bag. And that will then allows the rifle to recoil straight back on the bag directly into your shoulder. Uh, another key point is um, positioning. You want to be laying directly behind the rifle in straight line with it. So the recoil goes straight back into your shoulder, down through your body. Um, I also like to dig my toes into the ground a little bit, just so I can then push forward into the bipod. So position is the other key point. So uh, really, we've basically just got four key points there. The bipod, loading the bipod, the rear bag, um, your ballistics, having your ballistics all squared away so you know drops are, are correct, and um, then just body position behind the rifle. And that is your four basic points to uh, get an accurate shooting. Right, well, we're going to call it a day now and uh, I go home and change rifles, get a thermal scope, and go and look for a fox.
So this evening I've come down to a uh, fairly small farm. It's probably only about 400 acres, something like that. Now um, there'll be lamb in here in just a few weeks. And um, I've come down to have a little look, see if I can thin out the fox population before they start lambing. So we're just going to have a little walk around the first couple of fields and um, see if we can see anything. And with that, I've literally just spotted a fox straight down in this field. So I'm going to walk down and see if we can get onto it. It's just gone through the hedge into the next field, but it won't go far. So we'll see if we can catch up with it. So that was a bit of a result there. I've just come through into this next field and uh, the fox had come down the hedgerow there and he was just milling around at the bottom of the field. So um, I've just given him a little squeak and he's come toodling up straight up the field and uh, he was hanging around for a little bit, so I'll give him another little squeeze and he came in a little bit closer and he was just coming straight towards me, so I had to just give him a quick Oi! and then take the shot. But uh, yeah, they came in really close. He's probably only about, probably about 30 yards, if that. So um, that was a good start. And uh, I've also just spotted down the bottom and there's a couple more, but they're over the boundary, they're in the next field. So um, I've tried giving them a squeak, but they didn't want to know, so I'll leave them for now. And uh, we'll go out and pick this one up and then uh, well, just see what else comes out on this field. This is always a good field, so we'll just uh, hang around for a bit, I think. Oh, that's a decent fox, that. Dog fox, a lovely coat on him. Big fox, too. So we've got another one, just come up this hedgerow. He's a little way down there, but he's working his way up. So I think, well, it's going to wait here, I think, and hope he doesn't go through the hedge. Got some buildings right in the distance there but they're on the top of a bank but just to be safe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna hopefully let this fox come pretty close and get a shot he 
he's still working his way up the hedgerow, so as long as he doesn't go through that hedge into the next field, um, and hopefully I'll get a shot of him. But even if he does go through, I can walk around the hedge here, the gateway just behind me, and go through that, get the other side, and I might get a shot of that side. an hour. Really pleased with that. Again, that one came in really close. That was probably only about 50 or 60 yards as well. Brilliant stuff. I'm actually saying that, that last one was even close. That was about 30 yards, so yeah. This one was uh, a little bit further, but still ridiculously close. That's another dog fox. Again, it's in nice condition. Good. Right, so I've got a fox just over the other side of this hedge. And um, at the moment, he's just hunkered down. I tried giving him a squeak, but he didn't want to know. I think he's winding me. But at the moment, he's just he's just tucked in in the undergrowth there. I'll just see his head, so. I'm just gonna keep an eye on him. Hopefully he'll stand up. If not, I might just go for a headshot. I'll we'll see. Another close range one, but he thought he was safe, sat over there, just the other side of that hedge, but I could just still, still see his head there. Um, that was the only thing I had to aim at, so uh, I just took that one out with a headshot, so he did nothing about it, so um, yeah, three in the bag. Right, I'm going to go and grab these two, and then uh, drag them up to the gate with the other one. make these uh dragging these foxes a bit easier. Just use a little drag. It's actually a mate of mine made these. Really good idea. You can drag several foxes with these. And uh oh, get that back on there. And yeah a great idea. Especially when you've got more than one but I'll use that for now just to drag them up with the other ones. Here he goes, right? 
the side of the silage clamp. down this bit of ground but uh yeah that's um that's good going now i'm pleased with that i'm gonna leave it out i think it's getting late now just time for a nice little celebratory drink i think